Hello and welcome to this video on how to ballast double O gauge um, model railway track. I've kind of resisted doing this video um, because there's quite a lot of other good ones out there but I've had three or four requests on my YouTube and um, a few more on my um, Facebook channel so I've decided to uh, show you how I do it. Now I'm not saying I do it um, the best way, <laughs> far from it, I'm just showing you the way that um, has worked for me when I just recently did the Dean Park station area. What I use for my ballasting is a green scene ballast mate and you get them for um, different scales N gauge, double O and I think they do an O gauge as well and that has grooves in it that sit on the track and they just slide along and uh, as obviously you've filled it with ballast it flows out and um, there's three holes at the bottom one for the rail and the two either sides go over the sleepers at the side and give the kind of ballast a, a shoulder just like the rail, rail, railway. So that's the main tool that we need. We also need a, a paintbrush. I've actually cut this one um, to make it more of a stubby one and that's I use for almost tampering the, the ballast in the track which you'll see. Uh, I've got another another kind of quite broad paintbrush here again just for brushing ballast off the sleepers and this um, small screwdriver, flathead screwdriver this is what I use a lot of the time to get the ballast uh, in between the sleepers and, and off the rails and off the sleepers itself. The ballast that I've been using um, is the Woodland Scenics Medium Ballast Grey Blend. Um, a lot of people use N-gauge ballast for their o -ga double O-gauge railway. Um, I got both, the, the double O and the N, and I felt that the, the double O was, was um, small enough. However, I've not ruled out using smaller ballast on, say, the TMD areas, etc. that aren't mainline. But I think it's a down to personal choice. And this kind of shaker bottle here, um, and a bag that I bought, have lasted me the whole side of the, the layout, so that it does go a long way. Okay, so, let's get started. Right, I'll film the, the ballast mate, spread her up with the, with the ballast. Um, before you do run the ballast um, spreader along the track, make sure that the track pins are um, pushed down as far as, as they can go and uh, everything is you know clear of obstruction. You don't want the ballast mate to, to catch and snag on anything. Um, it doesn't, doesn't have any problems going over the fish plates or joins in track um, and obviously you can only use this on um, actual track and not turnouts. So, to do it, it's, uh, you've got to be slow but steady. Um, you can't, if you go too quick, it will leave bare parts um, where I've had this uh, cork uh, cut back. Now, what I've done, I'll just move the camera up. This, these are just scrap pieces of track, but the, um, the cork has been cut maybe two or three mil outside the edge of the sleeper, and this will help give us the shoulder. Obviously, you want a, a bigger shoulder, you use um, thicker. Uh, quark. This is just one sixteenth of an inch, and on the main lines that I've got out there, I've used one eighth inch. So I've just got um, the same cork that I used on the station area, which hasn't got a massive shoulder on it, and I tended to find that was just what I needed. So, I say you fill it with ballast. This should get you maybe about a, a foot, foot and a half, um, depending on um, how much ballast you want to put down. But you just simply and slowly get it started, and then drag it. Along. And I'll keep going off the screen here, and there we go. Now, that's done about uh, 14, 14 inches, just, just under 15 inches worth of track. And uh, as you can see, the, the, the sleepers are quite well covered just now, and um, the, the ballast has covered the cork, and it gives us kind of instant shoulder, which is what, we, what you want. Um, Especially if you're doing modern image um, railway. The older steam railways didn't have such a big shoulder, um, but modern techniques of spreading the ballast give that a kind of shoulder. Right, what I do now is I'm finished with the, the, obviously the ballast mate just now. I'll start off with, um, as many people do, just using your finger to try and push as much of the, the ballast in between the sleepers. You don't want the ballast sitting on top of the sleepers, and you certainly don't want the ballast on the the inside of the rails because that will affect the running of your the trains because obviously the flange of the, the wheel of the train needs the inside of the rail to um, to run. Now you'll tend to find that 
as you spread it out, you'll get further than you actually, you know, another couple of inches there. Um, it's still quite heavily coated in, in ballast, and what I tend to do now is I'll get this kind of truncated brush and I'll tamper it in. I suppose like the real railways to try and push it down. Now don't be afraid to do this two or three times, it just helps spread the, the ballast into the, the areas that you know that aren't filled underneath the, the initial surface and um, just gives it a more solid foundation. If you do have put ballast down and you don't maybe tamper it down or you know push it into place, what tends to happen when you glue it is the glue will push or pull the ballast down and you'll end up with um, more of a, a gap between the top of the sleepers and where the ballast starts. Depends what kind of effect you're looking for, whether it's you know main line or, or disused railway or you know branch line. They've all got different ways of the ballast going down. So there I go. I've not actually touched the, the outside yet. It's just just stress that this is just the way I do it. There's other guys who do it that's that suits them. Depends what kind of ballast you're using. Depends what kind of gauge of ballast. Now, here is the. Um, here starts the tedious part, and um, if it's not all tedious, I have to say. Um, what I do now is I get the screwdriver, and I'll just go in inside rails above the chairs, and I'll, I'll go like that. What that'll do is instantly remove all the the um, ballast from the inside of the the track. And I'll zoom in there. See, there's no ballast sitting actually on the uh, the rails itself. It's now kind of moved into the sleeper area and you think, oh goodness me, I've got far too much there. And I'll do it the same on the other side very quickly and I even do it on the outside as well, but you know, I'll be doing that. Again, just helps settle it as well. Helps settle the ballast. So we have the first part of the ballasting process. Okay, what I'm going to continue to do now is just keep running my finger along just on the inside of the, the rail on top of the sleepers, just again pushing any ballast that's wanting to go down in between the sleepers, giving it a chance. Keep doing that until you're quite happy. Now, I take the screwdriver, and this is the this is the, the long uh, winded bit. I take the screwdriver and I actually just work every single piece of ballast into where it should be. Now, this is why it's probably taking me 20 hours to ballast the station. I am pedantic and quite a perfectionist in this area. I tend to take longer on things that I'm not comfortable doing, um, stuff that's new to me, um, and I tend to make a neater job of it. See the stuff that I think I'm, I'm good at, I tend to rush it and make a mess of it. So, you know, it's worth taking your time with this. As uh, there's other guys on, on YouTube have said, you know, it's not going to be a quick a quick task if you want to do it right and you may as well do it right because once it's glued down that's it it ain't going anywhere so I'm just going to work my way along the rails doing that and that will clean up the top of the, the sleepers and you do it on both sides of the of the rails and this is not a quick fix this is not a quick you know you say oh the, the ballast mate claims you know two feet in 20 seconds of ballasting well, let's let's be honest, it's all this preparation work before that, then the actual spreading of the ballast and then the tidying up of the ballast, that takes more than 20 seconds I can assure you. Okay, but again, I would stress to you, just like others stressed to me when they were giving me advice, don't rush this part, get it all right and try and, if, again if it's looking like you've got too much ballast, what I tend to do, I've got too much ballast above the rails and it isn't really the case here, I'll actually wet my finger and just and it takes off the excess and I can just shake it back into the tub. After I've got all the ballast off the top, I go along with the, my finger and my thumb and just gently press it down. And again, this might bring stuff on top of the sleepers again. And I just shake the excess in the, the tub and I just go back and I just tidy it up. Like this. There we go. I'm only going to do to, to there so you can see. Um, I'll just go back and check. There's nothing on the rails. Like that again. That tends to dislodge a few pieces. I'm happy-ish with that. Anyway, don't make it sit on top of the chairs too much. 
Um, the ballast tends not to be on the sleepers, although, in saying that, my local station, there's, a, there's a, a spread of ballast that covers the central part of the sleepers. So some, you know, it's not always neat and tidy. So don't be afraid to, you know, leave a bit on top of the sleepers to, uh, to create that effect of, you know, nothing is perfect in the real world. Right, that's me finished the, the length of track um, by tampering and neating the, the ballast up uh, in between the rails so there's none sitting on top of the, the sleepers. And if I kind of go down to track level, you can see that the majority of the, the ballast is sitting where it should. What I've not done yet is I've not neatened up the ballast on the outside of the rails, so I'll just quickly show you how I do that. Take my finger, right and tucked inside the rail, back and forward. You can put more pressure on the rail than you are actually the sleeper, but just the, the motion of you doing this, right to the end, moves the ballast from the top of the sleepers. It also helps push the ballast in between the sleepers, and at the same time, gives a small shoulder. Um, on the on the far side, again, same again, with this side, with two different finger depending on what side you're on. Just run my see, it's just the very edge of my my, uh, my thumb there that's touching the top of the sleepers, almost the chairs actually of the the on on the sleepers, not really the sleeper itself. I'm just moving any ballast. I don't want to be sitting on top of the sleepers. Out of the way. Now some tracks have actually the sleepers at the side covered in ballast. Um, modern image and you know back to the the eighties and whatnot. So don't be obsessed by getting it all off if you want, unless you want you know a, a spanking neat piece of track. And again, I use the old trusty screwdriver just to flick any very carefully off that you don't want sitting on top of the sleepers and sometimes this flicks the odd bit into the middle and you've got to move it again. If you want the side of the sleeper showing, you know the side down here, you can take the brush and you can actually pad it down, you know, drag it out a bit um, to, to, to flatten the, that shoulder down that I've produced there. And if I move the camera and I'll show you what I mean by that little shoulder, you know, it's kind of it's kind of got a little raise to it very subtle raise to it um, so it just sits slightly above you don't want that sitting too high I know some um, modern main lines have quite a heavy shoulder especially in between the two rails you don't want that sitting above your rail line because when you take your track rubber to etc it rubs on it and it makes clearing the track almost uh, almost um, more of a chore than it already is a right pain so that's that's what I've done um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to neaten up the edge of the ballast before we put the PVA down. Right, there's some instances when you really want a, really, a nice clean edge here um, of ballast, especially when you say you've got a platform. Um, when I did my platforms in the layout, I drew around the platform profile with a pencil and then I masked off the area I didn't want the ballast to go, i.e. the area that was underneath the platform, and then I had to get the, the, the you know the ballast off the masking tape. So I took a scrap piece of ply, you can use a ruler, and you just draw the ballast in. Now again if you're if you're doing um you know just a normal mainline track, you don't have to do this because you're obviously going to have vegetation and, and weeds and, and, and whatever, smaller maybe gravel in the cess than, the, um, than you would have at a station. So, you know, this is not a must, but a very quick, you know, 30 seconds each side here should neaten up what I'm doing and just give it that kind of tidier look. So if I was putting a platform or a Something that require a straight edge. I've got it. I've got it done. There you go. Now I'll take you through that there, just a wee squiz. Now I don't know how long it took, it took me less than maybe a minute just to, to tidy that up. And it does make a difference.
let's see, especially around the station areas and retaining walls and stuff like that. Okay, so that's it really finished. I'm going to get down to the track level. You can see it's kind of got a shoulder on it and it kind of slopes down towards the ground. If you don't want that shoulder on it, you want it you know, very flat, you could take this and just pad the shoulder down um, so that it's more flat with the top of the sleepers. I'm leaving it like that just now. I'm going to go ahead and ballast these two areas before I get the glue out and then I'll show you how to glue it down. This whole um, piece of wood is a test bed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ballast it, glue it, and then I'm going to practice with my airbrush on weathering it before I let myself loose on the on the real layout. So I'll be back shortly. Right, the ballast is done. It's time to um, glue it into position. What I do now is um, you take just normal tap water, and I've got a, a squishy bottle here. Uh, it's a home base, cost about a pound or something, and just some normal tap water. Don't scoosh too close to the, the trap or you'll disturb the ballast. So maybe just maybe what 12, 15 inches away, give it a a soak in. Now I've put tin foil down round about just to keep the the mess to a minimum. Tin foil's great if you've got a Tin foil's great if you've got a um, you know structures you don't want covered and you can wrap it around like you know a retaining wall or, or platform or something like that. It just stops the uh, the water uh, you know making it all soggy and damp. Right, I just gave that a minute or so just to kind of seep into the the uh, the ballast. If you missed a bit, just very lightly give it another scoosh. What I use now is I'll mix my PVA in, uh, water mix. Um, but I use a Deluxe Materials Pinpoint Bottle Kit. And it's got syringes, but I've not really bothered with these. Um, you just need the, the kind of squeezy bottle. And you can get these cheaper elsewhere. I know Squires used to do them. Um, and, you know, other, other kind of craft shops. This is just one I got. I think got a Model Rail Scotland back in February. So I thought, well, oh, that might be handy. And it certainly has worked out to be that way. Right. What I do now then is get an old jug, not one of your your wife's, um, she won't be happy, and I'll just move the camera up a touch if I can. PVA that I use, um, I have used different types, I'm not used to this, this one yet, this is the home base one, uh, I guess it's £4 or something, 4 or £5 it cost me. I had been using the you know, the brand Evo Stick, uh, and it worked okay to start with, but when I got the new bottle, it tended to turn the rails green, as I kind of highlighted in my September update. So I've kind of moved away from that. I had used the the uh, the B and Q zone one, and that that worked fine. But I've got this home base one here. Uh, it's a lot cheaper than the Evo stick. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour a glob into my measuring jug like that. Now it says on many a a website, magazine, etc. 50-50 water um, PVA mix. I'm not going to go anywhere near that. Uh, in fact, I might need a bit more glue in there. My good old glug. I'm going to, uh, you know, probably go two-thirds glue, one-third water. Okay, again, just tap water. Uh, just, you know, plop it in. That sounds fairly... Correct. And then what you do is your fairy liquid, I suppose in the acts of fairness I have to say that other brands are available, um, and just, to me how much glue you're mixing up, but a couple of a couple of drops in there does the business. Okay, we don't want too much, we just end up with bubbles. Not that that bothers them, the bubbles will soak in, but um, you don't want to create uh, more mess than you need to. Then get a scrap piece of wood or something of that nature and you just mix your glue up. Give it a good mix, good stir. Don't do too much glue. I mean, I've done a very small one here because I'm only going to do a very small piece of track on video, but if you mix too much up and you're there for maybe an hour, an hour and a half, two hours doing the ballasting, you know, it'll start to go off and you don't want to start having the issues with glue getting clogging your nozzle or your, of your syringes and whatnot. Now that looks okay. Right, by that time, the water is kind of soaked through into your ballast, so I'll tilt the camera again. 
apologies for the angle of the camera, I've not got my, my third or fourth arm with me today. Uh, I think I'm ready to go now. It's kind of like a, a kind of fresh cream kind of consistency. Some people say milky, but you know, I, I, it takes longer to set and there's more ooze in it and you don't want it too thin. Or you just have to go and maybe reapply it later. I have one instance of I've had a wee bit too thin and I've had to go and do it again. So we're now ready to, really ready to roll with this uh, gluing. All right, let's get started. Um, I've got a, a 20 mil syringe here, 20 25 mil syringe, and um, I got this from Squires, uh, 95 pence or something. Bought, bought a few. What you do is uh, you just well, that's why this is how I do it anyway. Uh, I just get a a nice syringe full of it from the the mix. Uh, squirt it into my bottle. Careful not to too much of a mess. That'll do. Watch doesn't watch put down safely. It will start to leak everywhere. Fill my bottle. Put my on. Have the kitchen towel at the ready, just in case. And it's simply, well, simply I say it's simply, um, a case of dripping it on in between the sleepers. Back and forth, letting it soak in. You really want to saturate this, you really want to put quite a bit on. Now if you squish it too hard, even if it's a syringe or a scooter bottle, you're going to move the ballast. So just I put it quite close to the ballast, so there's not a lot of distance for the glue to drop. And I'm just squeezing lightly on this bottle. Again, if you had a syringe, you're pushing on the syringe, but my issue with syringes, sometimes a bit jerky and you know you'll get a, a sudden injection and that is not what you want you don't want a big mess because you mess it up at this point you can't really you know reorganize the ballast when it's soaking there I've got my bit and it's sitting on top just now but that will soak in it will penetrate down into the into the ballast and then through into the cork and hopefully give you a, a firm set I'll just do a bit more up there. so this is just a test bed for my weathering skills skills and in inverted commas I don't know if I've got any yet I'll have to find out when I practice now if you've taken your time and put the ballast down you know neatly and stuff and this is this is the, the you know the but it pays dividends when you're putting it in place with the PVA mix. Remember to put the, a little drop of your fair liquid in just to help break the tension, the surface tension down of the of the uh, ballast, and it allows it to flow better. The shoulders exactly the same way. What I do is I run it down the, the top of the sleepers, very close to the chairs. Do that once to start with. Now I've done all this. This is about twelve inches of track that I've done and I've only now starting to think about refilling this you know squeezy bottle. So I think I'm going to fill it up there before I do the other side. Again a quick lug of PVA and water mix. This is the first time you do this, you think, my god, have I, have I done it right, have I done it wrong, have I done too much glue, have I not got enough glue, oh, right. Just, um, you know, don't look for instant results, this takes about two, three days to, to really go off and set. Do the other side. Again, just careful. Now, if, you've, if it, you find that the glue is not soaking in, probably because you've not got enough water on the ballast to start with, to break down the surface tension, um, or you've forgotten the, the fairy liquid detergent. Now if I've done, I've done that once and you can see it's sitting there on top of the sleepers just now you can even see that starting to soak away this will permeate through into the, the ballast and you might see it running out the side if you squirt too much the, it tends to like a, a kind of landslide, it'll wash some of the ballast away so just be careful um, I'm telling you all the things that happened to me here I'm, you know you learn on the job um, no matter how many videos you watch you've got to practice uh, for yourself now you'll see this is actually starting to work its way through and this bit here is the only bit here that's not been you know, uh, soaked 
But that's not enough. Um, I tend to go over it again and give it another blast. And if it needs to be down onto the ballast itself, you know, just on the slope. Again, if a wee bit does flow with a like a landslide, don't panic. You can always patch it up and glue it on later. And that's not flowing particularly well down here, so I'm, I'm guessing that I've not maybe scooshed the water at that point. Maybe I was protecting the camera, I don't know. That's pretty much saturated. And a quick squiz down the other side now. Again, that'll help. Flow into the, the shoulder. And there you have it. These bubbles, don't worry about these, it's obviously a wee bit of air. Um, and that'll disappear as it dries. Do this bit, if you can see far enough along. This bit too. Don't worry about getting glue on the side of the rails or top of the sleepers. This glue dries clear and uh, you know, and don't worry about getting anything on top of the rails either. That can just be removed quickly with a, a track rubber or a bit of emery cloth. Or if you've got one of those track cleaner, the mobile track cleaner, like a, a wagon or something, one of the dapple ones. You could run that over it and it'll take all the, the stuff off. But I just went over it with the old Pico track rubber and it tended to take uh, off any dried glue and tarnishing. The, the, the rails will change colour. Um, they will go a slightly darker yellow, um, brown colour. Um, they'll not say shiny shiny. They will be too shiny to be realistic, but you know it's not going to affect the, the flow of a uh, voltage or current. I'm just going to finish this little bit off and that will probably do me for now. Again, just make sure you're getting it. I'm going to go back and forth and I kind of S pattern. And even now you see it actually seeping out the side onto the side parts of the sleepers. It's going under the rail and out the side which is good because at least it's flowing. If you think your mix is too watery, you know, just Add a bit more glue in there. Telltale sign if it's too thick, it'll clog your nozzle. I say a kind of fresh cream consistency is what you're looking for, and uh, if you think it's too weak, well, add some more glue. So there we go. I'll just take you down a wee. I just use a tin foil, folks, to stop getting my baseboard. Um, covered in, covered in water. There we go. You can see closely it's actually seeping out now the bottom of the, the ballast. It's just about enough. You don't want it pouring out because then you've obviously, I've saturated it now. You can tell it's worked its way through. And again, if there's any movement of the ballast on the top of the sleepers, you can always pick that off with a, a the screwdriver or the Stanley blade later. That's it. Any questions you've got on this um, and I've not answered them, just give us a just give us a shout. I said at the beginning I didn't intend doing a how-to ballast um, instructional video because there's a lot of good ones out there and um, they certainly helped me a lot. But you know, some guys have been on at me for for doing one, so I hope I've done it well. Um, I'll, show, I'll close with a couple of clips of the, the station that's been ballasted and glued down already. Remember this won't be dry in 12 hours, 24 hours well, depending on the temperature. It's about 20 degrees up in the attic just now. Um, just about 24, 36 hours um, would you know see it pretty well done. But if it's a bit slightly cooler, you're looking at 48, you know, plus hours for it to go off. Don't panic. Don't panic. Says he who panicked. Okay. Thanks for watching and I hope you got something out of this video. And those of you who have um, already done videos on this or have done it, please tell me if I'm doing it wrong, right. If you think you've got a better technique then you know please share it because we want people out there to have the best the best results we can. That's why we always put these videos on here. It's not for um, 
self gratification, it's just to help these guys out, like myself who are quite new to the hobby. Thanks for now.